Kiss of the Beats, Kiss of the Beats, do, 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 do. Kiss of the Beats, Kiss of the Beats. I'm getting the sense that Kirsten has never listened to Kiss of the Beats because this is what I do every time. It's a thing. It's our shtick. I, I can confirm I have not heard it, but that was marvelous. Thank you. Usually I bring in different um, musical takings on Cues of the Buttes just to annoy the shit out of Fred, which has always been successful. But yeah, <laughs> um, I'll start with the 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 original, the OG, the high pitch Cues of the Buttes, Cues of the Buttes. Anyway, uh, we got a lot of I'm really- I'm impressed by your vocal range. Thank you. I'm impressed. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Nobody else's, but at least you are. So <laughs> I got something going for me. Uh, we got a lot of questions to kick it off, Kirsten. Let's start with Adam C. He had a few for us. So ready? Here we go. All right. What's it what's it like when a new reporter joins the media scrum? While it's great for the fans that we're getting more coverage with Joe Smith, who is joining the athletic beat, um, I was wondering how it affects other reporters for the team. Also, what have you missed mo- the most during the offseason? Um, I can I'll start answering, I guess, for the media scrums here in Minnesota, a we're super friendly, obviously. Like that's not just a thing. Like I like to think that our little group is very, very friendly and welcoming. Um, and the other thing is it's not that different because general media scrums have other reporters in there too. So Joe Smith, while he's coming onto the beat and will be around more frequently, he's been around, he's traveled with the Tampa Bay lightning. He's come to Minnesota for those games. So it's never really that different. And you're always kind of welcoming, whether it's a new person, whether it's a veteran person, whatever it has you, like, I think you're all trying to get news and yes, you want to keep some things closer to your chest and you're hoping for those one-on-ones, but in the scrum, you're all just trying to help each other get the best quotes possible because you're all going to use them in your story written in one way or another. So that kind of answers that question. What have I missed most during the off season? Not a damn thing because I love my off season and I don't think hockey as much as I can possibly do. Uh, (laughs) No, I miss the people like, and that's not just to say like the players and the coaching staff, but like my people like Kirsten and our hockey people, like you become kind of a little family. So it is literally like the first day back at school when you're back at rink for the first day of camp, it's like, Hey, how are you? How was summer? And it's just, kind of it's kind of nice because you're together all the freaking time during the season um for those that travel on the road you see a lot of each other so I guess I just miss the people every off season it's always good to bump back into them Kirsten what about you any thoughts on either of Adam's questions well I I don't have much to add for the media scrum I'm not down there in the trenches with you guys I'm more up on the concourse in the press boxes living the fancy I, life yeah where I reign I wouldn't say that by any means <laughs> um but what I've missed most during the off season well also thank you Jesse for the shout out I've you miss uh, you know I'm just flattered know. I'm flattered that's all I have to say yeah. um what I missed most you know I'm gonna first off I'm gonna say I miss how packed in the energy that's at the XL energy center, just the fans bringing it every single home game night and being able to interact with fans at games. I've missed that. I've missed the friendly debates and chirping with, you know, other, other hockey fans or even Jesse too, even though she scares me a little. <laughs> I don't know why I am the least intimidating person in the no, world. Just, you just are very firm in your opinions. And that's, that's great. Well, get, I don't know. Right. I just get better opinions. It, <laughs> we'll save that. We're going to table that for a little bit, but no, I mean, going along with what Jesse said, I miss, I miss the people. I miss the energy. I miss the action. So I'm excited to get back in the rink on game nights. There's just something super exciting about that, that I love. So it's just fun. It's fun being there in person. It's very different. It's hard to explain but the energy. Yeah. yeah for me, now, it's fun for like a month. And then I'm kind of like, Okay. Like I, you know, go back to my tan, you know, can't get those Chris Lindahl board tans without, uh, such good it's, chirps. It's such true. Chirps. It's true. Of it, do, do you miss your post game Taco Bell? That's mm-hmm. another thing I got to ask you. Yeah, no, for sure. That's true. I got to bring that and see then that's why winter it's good to have the post game Taco Bell. Cause I can cover all of this bod of from that's created from post game Taco Bells in the summer. That's when I feel the after effects. Oh my goodness. Well, switching gears now, we've got a question from Tony, somewhat along the lines of what we were just talking about. Since you went with some chirps in your trailer, I've got to ask, what are the best chirping stories you've heard of? You kick it off. What are any good chirping Man. stories you've heard? Well, you know, St. Cloud, I'm, was there any good ones at St. Cloud? Gosh, I know there was, but this is the thing. Like now I'm, I'm trying to think on the spot here. Um, I don't know. I think the, the personally, like, I love a good chirp that just kind of digs deep. The personal ones are the best ones and usually the funniest, to be quite honest. Funny because they're true (laughs) sometimes. 
Um, but I, I think I'm going to need a sec to think of a specific chirp that I think. Has yeah, been- I agree. Like, I love ones that are super like I'm I will admit this on air. I've admitted it to anybody that's complimented our promo video. Your chirps ruled like bow down. They were so good. You like mine were very generic, right? Because I was just kind of like, oh, whatever. I'll just place out there. Yours were good. And I loved it. I appreciated every second of them. Go check that out if you haven't. Because they I were literally funny. spent two hours thinking <laughs> like I put so much thought into it and I was I was stressed I was like they were so oh, good gonna, these you got land? me like know. those are the best I think I mean I also love like from the NHL level and while I haven't heard them I've seen them on like YouTube videos ever wherever they're like who are you like are you even relevant to this game or like I would I would put you in the penalty box but you're not even relevant it's actually hurts the team more to have you on the ice like little ones like that that are so common that I think are kind of fun um Drew Doughty had the famous one you suck at hockey and that's a simple very to the point like you just suck at hockey right um but yeah, like I agree. I think anything personal, like you spent more time in the minors is always kind of funny, not too mm-hmm. personal. You don't want it to hurt too bad, but you kind of want it to be like, I love the ones that you can, you can walk away from and be like, that was, that was good. Like, yeah. or you can't even think of a comeback and that comes in any facet, whether it's hockey or not. Like, I just love chir- Like, that's what I love about hockey. I love chirping and BSing and poking fun and poking the bear and being sarcastic. Um, so those are kind of some of my favorites. Yeah, Did you think no, of one? I agree with you. You can say yours against me. I thought those were good too. Um, that Jesse takes more selfies than Chris Lindahl has billboards. <laughs> so good. It was so good. So true. It's so that good. Jesse's takes are about as popular as Nickelback. <laughs> that's what it was. Yes, yes. Taco that's... Bell closes early when they hear you're coming. <laughs> She'll be here all all season, guys. Here all season. I love it. I love it. Um, the next question we have, we got two again from Joe B. His first question, probably in regards to this week's live show at JL Beers in Burnsville, uh, partnered by, produced by, seen whatever, by Grain Belt. We love Grain Belt, good Minnesota beer. Uh, he asks, what is your favorite Grain Belt beer flavor? So that'll be the first one. What's your favorite Grain Belt beer flavor, Kirsten? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the Northeast. Oh, Classic. That's a classic. It's love the classics. Love the classics. I mean, a Northeast super good. And that was my favorite. Although my husband recently brought home the uh, lemon or maybe it's called Limon. It's, it's a grain belt lemon and he's big into lemon. It's his new favorite beer. He loves it. And that's not bad. I think that I'm not going to say it's my favorite. I think I would say Northeast, but this lemon one pretty darn near close. And you can't go wrong with the premium again, grain belt sponsoring us out at JL beers in Burnsville this Thursday. Uh, at 7 p.m., they will have green belt specials on Northeast on premium. Love to see it. Uh, be sure to come say hi to us. Check us out as we talk a little puck. Next question from Joe B is, will you guys make the trip to Des Moines this year and catch an Iowa wild game to watch Mr. Jesper Wellstead? If he plays well, how loud do you think the noise will be for him to get a call up, especially if Gustafson is not good? Kirsten? You know, I would love to make it down to an Iowa wild game. I can honestly say I have never been, but I would like to, I think it would be so fun. There's something, I mean, we talk about the energy at the XL energy center, the energy in the minor leagues, Mm -hmm. there is something just so fun. Those fans are crazy in the best way, very passionate. So yeah, I mean, I would love to make it down to an Iowa wild game. And as far as fans being loud to get a call up, I think if he's playing well, you are absolutely going to hear it from wild fans to call him up, especially like we mentioned, if Gustafsson is not playing good. So, I mean, is it going to happen? I don't know. I mean, we heard what all of last season too for until Boldy officially got called up, like bring him up, like bring up. You hear it all the time, right? All the time. Like wild fans are very passionate, very opinionated. If he's playing well, (laughs) you are absolutely going to hear about it. No question. That's true. I won't even add much more. Again, we discussed just that and whether well said should get a look this year up in the NHL or stay down in the A with our guest, Joe O'Donnell. So be sure to go swing over and check out that episode, but spot on. Yes, I would probably love to go check out an IOL game, but the wild kind of had me on lockdown. So to like take a weekend to go down to Des Moines, we'll see. Maybe I'll couple it with a stop in Ames and watch a cyclone football game or something like that. Who knows? I know. All right. You got the next question. 
Yes, we got a question from Derek F. He said, Major League Baseball is making the bases larger and banning the shift. Will the NHL make nets larger or ban the neutral zone trap in our lifetime? Jesse, thoughts? Straight answer, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I think they love the trap. The goalies love the trap, right? Like, I think they're a fan of it. And you make the nets larger. Like, the way that scoring has already increased I think then you're just going to make goalies be more and more frustrated. So I feel, yes, you want to see an offensive surge, but you're already kind of there. The NHL in general just has shifted to a faster, more offensive game. So I don't see that change coming at all, especially in my lifetime because I'm old as balls. Um, but like, other than that, I just straight answer. No, it's an interesting concept. I love, I mean, it's a good conversation topic, but major league baseball is something that's taken forever to make any changes right the nhl i think does a nice job at keeping up with some different things and trying new things because they're not you know as they're not as big of a sport as baseball but i would say no kirsten additional thoughts on it i would also say no and i'm also gonna say i don't even want to see it like especially like (laughs) making the nets larger i don't want to see it like yeah if if it's working if it's not broken don't fix it and i don't think it's broken so let's just keep it the way it is there I like it the way it is. I like it. I'm do that one. So next question we got is from Chris S. He said, long time listener, first time questioner. This one's just for you, Kirsten. Have you watched Mighty Ducks yet? Don't let the Chris, people. Chris, you're putting me on the spot. Um, I'm going to try to tread lightly here. Uh, no, I haven't. Can you tread lightly? Like, <laughs> okay, well, under. I was going to tread lightly, but I'm like, no, I'm just going to dive right in. No, I haven't seen it. But also you guys don't understand what I've been going through since I've moved into my (laughs) new house. I literally had a tech come like work on my Wi-Fi during this recording. I don't have Wi-Fi, nor have I had Wi-Fi for going on a full month now. Like I'm doing this from my hotspot on my phone. Um, Hashtag get Kirsten Wi-Fi. Like this has been horrible. This has been like I feel so off the grid. Like I would not be able to make it in any other time free Wi-Fi. Like this has been, it's made my life so hard. So well, I'm just going to say that once I have Wi-Fi, then yes, I will watch. I believe I do have it on VHS. If we have a VHS player somewhere, I'm Does sure anyone I, have- I don't have a VHS player either. Do I have you? like a T I have a TV with a built-in VHS because my dream is to give it to my children one day. And like, Ooh. here you go. You put it in their room. Like you can watch this. It gets you regular local cable channels and you can watch a movie because when I had that as a child I thought that was super cool so that's Jesse's also just saying this because she doesn't want to have to get rid of it or move it out of her house herself. also that so she's gonna pawn also it that. onto her kids exactly <laughs> that's what every good parent does that's exactly oh uh, classic and final question I'll just wrap this one up then ice wild 29 wants to know what's your prediction for the Minnesota wilds season hmm I I think the wild will be okay. I think they'll be a little bit above 500 this season. I do think they make the postseason as a wild card team. Um, I don't think they make it past the first round. I say that painfully because I want to see it again. Like my take, I'm not saying it because I don't want them to advance. Like everyone wants them to. So it's painful for me to give my take. I just see them. (laughs) getting bounced right away in the playoffs. Like history repeats itself. Um, But I do see them having a little bit above average season. It's not going to be as historic as last year, not as record breaking, but I think people will be pleasantly surprised by the team. That's a safe way to play it. Um, And we'll have our season predictions with like rankings and all of that coming up before the season actually kicks off here in October. Once we can see a couple of those guys actually take the ice. Um, Yeah, like I had said in this week's episode, and I've kind of said time and time again, I do think it'll be a small step back, not because you're losing Fiala, not because you're losing Cam Talbot necessarily. I just think it's going to be very hard to replicate what we saw last year because it just over exceeded so much. I mean, you guys know last season, I every season I'm a little low on the Minnesota wild, just not to be a pessimist. I just think I'm trying to be a realist too. Like I think it'd be natural for them to possibly take a small step back. It's not going to be a huge regression. Um, and again, it's not just because you're losing one guy or another guy, you still have a very skilled, talented together type of team. I just think it's going to be different. Um, things are going to have to just kind of be shifted around, move a little bit, and it's going to take a little while. So I think they will be, um, 
they, they could go either way. They could be a bubble team or they could be second in the division. One of those two things is going to happen, which again is safe. You'll have to check out our season preview episode when that comes out in a few weeks to find out exactly what we think. But uh, I think either way, it'll be a fun team to watch. That's I will say that. That's a guarantee. And I think they will make the playoffs. I just don't know that it'll be as the number two seed might be a little bit lower so we'll see thank you again all of you guys for your questions don't forget to check out this week's episode uh with joe o'donnell where we dive more into training camp more into the rookies a little bit of that um as well as don't forget to come see us at jl beers in burnsville courtesy of our friends over at grain belt that's gonna do it subscribe rate love ya see you later bye